How can you make your videos, microfilms, family vacation footage, amateur art house movies, corporate films, you name it, more cinematic? More like, well, art. And less like a hodgepodge of thoughtless moving images. Rule number one, shoot everything, and I mean everything, on celluloid in black and white, and make sure you denigrate anyone who does otherwise. Rule number two, use the word celluloid as much as possible, just randomly in conversations with people who have no interest in film. And three, always, always dress in black. Dress your characters in black, dress your baby in black, dress your plastic pet snake in black, and start smoking. Everyone must be smoking. You, your characters, your baby, your pet snake, everyone. Wearing black and smoking, that's how you make art. And a beret, always wear a beret. You think I'm joking? Well, you're right, I am. Don't do any of those things, except dressing your pet snake in black, that's fine. Today we're going to talk about three things, three real and totally accessible things that you can do to make your work more cinematic. But before we dive into the mud, let's just deal with the definition of cinematic. What makes something cinematic? Do you remember the first time you went to the movies? Your parents had finally decided that you were old enough to not be a complete pain in public and trusted you to sit quietly for two whole hours. You sat in the darkened movie theater and as images flew across the giant screen, you just knew that you were gonna experience something special. And you weren't wrong. Sitting there quietly watching as a story unfolded before your eyes, you were transported to another place, another time, while you may not remember every single detail of your first trip to the movies, what you do remember is important. It's the feeling of being transported. Because that's what cinema does. And that's what makes a cinematic experience different from every other type of moving picture experience. Like the news, or a panda video, or your great Aunt Hilde's Alaskan cruise trip video featuring her new lover Klaus in every single shot. So our definition of cinematic for today is this. A cinematic moving picture transports the viewer, sweeps them up in the story, and carries them along for a ride. In short, a cinematic image is anything worthy of being tossed up on a big screen. So how do you make your videos more cinematic so that they transport the viewer and take them on a journey? There are a lot of things you can do, but today we're going to talk about three. Seek motion, seek emotion, and fall in love with light. Let's start with the first key to cinematic images, seeking motion. I'm not talking about getting obsessed with dolly shots and crane shots and sliders and gimbals and buying an arsenal of drones that you decide to fly overhead illegally until your nosy neighbor reports you to the police. I'm not talking about running around becoming a master of handheld or using that video tripod head like a pro. I'm talking about motion within the frame. Keeping your shots still, keeping the frame still, but filling it with motion. The motion is in the content, not the capture. It's a totally different approach. Today there's an obsession with moving the camera around all the time. All the time. Hypnosis. If I had to guess, I'd say this comes from our culture of music videos. But while camera movement is certainly part of the cinematic grammar, it isn't the thing that will bring your low budget pieces of art to life. No. Think about some of the most iconic moments of movie history. No, screw that. Think about your favorite scenes in movies. Just do it, humor me. Pause this video and think about all your favorite scenes. One, two, three, are you thinking about same. crazy camera movement? Or are you thinking about actors doing amazing things on screen? The human eye is attracted to motion, probably as a survival mechanism. And we're most especially interested in the movements of other humans and animals. It's how we stay alive. Even from the corner of our eyes, we can see a strange movement. That's actually why you may see a lot of camera movements in a boring scene, because the director is worried you're going to get bored and move on. So they move the camera around, hoping you'll just be hypnotized and not notice how boring the scene actually is. So yeah, motion. This is vital. Seek out motion at every turn. This will bring your moving pictures to life in a way that simply becoming obsessed with camera movement cannot. The next thing to look for is emotion. The camera doesn't lie. That's why bad acting is so painful to watch. The camera just sits there without judgment, capturing every nuance or lack of nuance the actor brings to the table. But by the same token, if you have a brilliant actor or an interesting subject, the camera will see their emotions sparkle and light up the screen. A moving picture can capture the essence of a person in a way that a still image cannot. 
And this is exactly what makes movies so interesting. But if you don't seek emotion, you're not exploiting the intrinsic power that the camera has. In fact, you're just roundly ignoring it, treating it like that kid nobody wants to pick for the soccer lineup. And that's just crazy town behavior. Not seeking out emotion means that your films will not have any substance. They might be beautiful, they might be full of movement, but they won't make the audience feel anything. And that's why people go to the movies, to feel something. Alice, you're killing me. You're killing me, Alice! You're goddamn killing me! Emotions don't have to be big epic ones, though. It can be just a sparkle in your subject's eye. It can be the clench of a jaw as they speak about something that angers them. Put that phone down. Get me the radio tower. Put it down. It can be stoic, or it can be histrionic. Need my sister and my daughter. It doesn't really matter. As long as the emotion is there. Soros line! Da, 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 da. And please welcome the king! Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. It's a dinner show. Dun, dun, dun. Hey. The next thing you need to do is to fall in love with light. That's the starting point of all images. Without light, you have no image. Light literally tells the story on screen. Light captures the motion and the emotion. Light allows your characters to live. And not all light is the same. As you begin to observe the way light falls in nature, the way the sun hits a person's face, or the way a desk lamp pools golden light in a dark room, you'll start to see that light tells a story. What you're looking for is lighting that tells the story that you want to tell. That does mean more work. Not necessarily accepting the obvious choice, or the easiest choice. Looking for interesting lighting. Looking for lighting that has something to say. Learning how to use light to shape a scene and create a mood. Learning to work with light is not easy, so don't feel bad if you struggle with this. But it's one of the key tools a filmmaker has to elevate their images from the mundane to the cinematic. And the sooner you start your love affair with light, the faster your images will start to look more and more like something that might deserve to be given a big screen one day. So yeah, you don't have to wear black turtlenecks or shoot on celluloid to make your projects more cinematic. You have to think like a filmmaker and use the greatest tool that's available to you, your brain. Thinking creatively and seeking out motion, emotion, and interesting lighting will elevate your filmmaking far more than an obsession with drones ever could. But hey, what do I know? Try it out yourself and see what you think of the results. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship.